My name is Brian Feinberg. I'm the founder of Plato Technologies, Inc. We're a Wyoming C Corp. The company was founded in 2018. Uh, I started my journey in the blockchain in 2014, but my experience with Ledger Technologies go back to 2008, uh, where I built a, a number of uh, analytic applications for publicly traded filers using something called XBRL. Um, there's an evolution that has gone on not only in data curation and data intelligence uh, that I had a front row seat to for many years. So, you know, I had an opportunity to be able to kind of learn from uh, doing things as opposed to kind of analyzing other people's work. Um, so Plato, we set out to as a response to the security vulnerabilities, primarily in blockchain uh, websites in 2017. Um, and we set out to kind of build a Web3 Bloomberg that was curating data intelligence in a highly authentic and vertical way. So as we started to build not only our methodologies, but our frameworks, we started a beta. And that beta was launched in April of 2020. We uh, not only came to the realization, but uh, the necessity of being able to kind of take the technology that we had been building for about a year and a half and take it against the backdrop of real world dynamics. Um, so we've had uh, 9.95 million users organically walk through the doors since we started. Um, the reason they have found us is kind of the way that we interface with other search engines. And the fact is that we index and we translate and we index all our content and all our information across 27 languages creating very much an authentic experience, especially to those people that are on the other side that are looking for um, um, content and uh, information in their own native languages. So we built Plato essentially as uh, a way to be able to um, make industry data your ally. Um, we all move in extremely fast markets. Technology is moving fast. The capital markets are moving fast. And frankly, we have to go to many different sources of, um, of places to consume that information. So we set out to be able to build competitive intelligence to help primarily and inspire the next generation of startups that are kind of coming out with innovation across those marketplaces. Part of that is um, our, you know, our future look at the company, which again, a lot of this is already built into our, our custom frameworks, but it's a web browser, a search engine, and a gateway to securely connect to any Web3 application that we've provisioned. Uh, we're very, very uh, strong advocates of censorship-free uh, environment. So we're not playing edit, edit, editor here, right, in terms of content. We're kind of going to vetted sources and curating that intelligence. This is a little side cut of some of the enterprises that have been through our doors. So we've had 70,000 enterprises. Um, over 200 countries represented, and we do have a very much a global system that we've identified, uh, we've built. Um, part of what we do, and this was kind of the results of uh, our beta environment, we'll get there into the English version right here. And uh, basically what we're doing is once we kind of started on the blockchain space and we kind of built our stack around search and parsers and indexers, essentially, an entirely new technology stack, some of the same stuff that Google has in their arsenal, especially regarding indexers and crawlers, we started to apply all those resources against 27 market verticals. So it's everything from aerospace and aviation all the way down to venture capital and supply chain as industries. And what's unique about the way that we are kind of curating our content is that A, we deliver this information in an ad-free environment, we're doing hashtag extraction, and we're also doing indexing on the fly. So because we've been two and a half years of, and by the way, this is our own advertising, um, this is for our own products, but this is kind of an example of some of the, you know, the way that we do hashtag extraction against local languages that kind of create and spawn traffic. To support all that data, is our analytic system. And we're looking at here from September 16th, 2021. Um, Google Search Console doesn't allow us to go farther back there, but we create organic impressions that generate a click-through rate. And if we look at the countries, you can see here that we have a very, very global footprint of users that are coming in not only on a daily basis, but are, are coming in time and time again. So places like Iran, um, you know, 
it's an interesting environment because we're indexing and curating our information in Parsi. That includes our defense feeds, which are also going in Arabic and also going into Hebrew. So we're kind and Chinese for that matter. So we're taking this information and we're organizing it. So once we kind of got to our um, our um, our concept of a Web three Bloomberg, we started to build applications that would drive engagements, but have some very very common traits to it. One is the multilingual indexing and um, 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 translation that we do. Further, we started to build um, we started to build an ontology around curating information from vetted sources. So it wasn't only a qualitative approach, it was really a quantitative approach. How much content were they producing and how structured was that content? So we built a mediation layer that allowed us to be able to take this information, index it, publish it globally across our system, and at the same time, create backlink attribution and hashtag extraction around the content side. That led to us building a vertical search engine that allows us to be able to search information from within the vertical and drive people over to very, very specific, I would say pockets of information that is on our directory that kind of drives a, a global, uh, I would say an authentic experience. So here in this search of Cardano, we're taking people to applications that are within the Cardano ecosystem delivered through our, our browser. Further, as we, you know, again, we're about engagement and we're about knowledge transfer and we're about helping inspire this next generation of thought leaders is we are curating data intelligence through voice to text and then text to translation environment. So we create 15 minute podcasts three times a day. That's pulling the snippets of the highest consumed information in our system and really giving somebody 15 minutes worth of very, very concentrated news and information that they can multitask. What does get interesting about our system now is our browser hook and our Web3 browser. As you can see here, we've built a taxonomy in the block. Of course, this is blockchain now we're talking about, but we're not really limited to just blockchain here. But we've kind of created a taxonomy through um, uh, the various sub-verticals, the industry, right? So I'm interested in wallets or I'm interested in DEX. I'm doing research. I want to see what's out there rather than go into Google all the time and just kind of get inundated with advertising and content. We drive users to applications that have already been pre-vetted. So as I connect here to this application, it's already identifying the fact that I need to switch networks, Okay. Uh, and again, we, we, we are using the provisions that are set up by the application. And now you can see here my Ethereum wallet is connected. I disconnect just to show you the example. We're using the provisions that are set up inside the application to connect, transact, engage, vote, and kind of move around the industry in a, in a highly secure and private way. So any of the information that is being extracted on our side has nothing to do with any of these transactions. We're not acting as a custodian. We really don't even know what users are connecting to. We only know that they came in on a particular landing page or a, a, a landing page inside our environment. So we've done this to about 2000 dApps right now. So you can go anywhere in our system and discover things. And I think the art of discovery again is undervalued. We don't know what's gonna resonate with us until we actually get in front of it. Um, part of this is um, creating a showcase for innovation, and that showcase is there to be able to kind of drive not only product awareness, but product adoption also. As commercial adoption, we think of Web3 as much more than just this concept of a metaverse right now. It's not just a gaming, uh, but there is infrastructure in place that needs to be built on a solid web three decentralized backend that allows these applications to be able to not only connect with each other, but for people to connect with them. Um, we're not a token. Yeah. We're raising capital in an equity situation. 
Um, we've kind of bootstrapped it up until now, but you know we uh, you know adhere to uh, what we think is the the highest levels of transparency, especially across our financing as well as our cap table. In order to build sustainability, we really believe that there has to be a partnership between us and our stakeholders as well as us and our community and understanding kind of what communities are looking for at the end of the day, and really to kind of deliver that in the form of kind of applications that we plug into our um, into our system. Further, we're curating pricing uh, on every single crypto that's out there, as well as every single public company that's out there. Currently for this uh, example, these dashboards that we've created are taking information from Edgar's system Okay, so these are publicly traded filers. This is all in XBRL where I had early started my you know, ledger journey in 2008. Um, I wish it was in Bitcoin, but it wasn't, but uh, you know, it was uh, uh, in a, a very exciting time also as the global stock markets of the world were responding to several major events that were, were there to enable trans. Uh, enable transparency across publicly traded filers. It wasn't just Bernie Madoff, okay? It was this thing called Sarbanes-Oxley that was set up to be able to kind of drive this narrative and drive the implementation of transparency across public filers, but in turn kind of led to crowdfunding and the evolution of kind of what we see today in the capital markets. So we're pulling fundamental information that's going all the way down to a balance sheet level of every public filer, um, and again, this is very much an engagement tool. It's there to be able to engage users. Um, and then the future look at the company is really built into a browser experience that we've built right here um, into our own lightweight client that we plan on distributing millions and millions of these at some point, not only from a privacy perspective, but from the ability to kind of build uh, plug-in applications that allow users and developers to be able to kind of show their applications off. So we're already working on an SDK that allows a user to be able to kind of connect with a global interface and kind of build uh, or at least connect their application to our, our user base. Um, we had the fortunate uh, opportunity to work with Bloomberg in 2018 while Bloomberg was exploring crypto data as an alternative data set. And you know, um, in that process, not only did we realize that we didn't have enough money to work with Bloomberg, it's very expensive, uh, you know, in a legal process there, but we had an opportunity to be able to kind of reverse engineer that the connection point that Bloomberg uses with their connect system that's used through a centralized environment. In our approach, it was all about decentralization and how to be able to kind of cr create a unifying layer to be able to connect users with the latest in innovation. Um, that's it. If you have any questions, I'm, uh, here to answer them. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, talk to me a little bit so that we have it for, uh, the, the judges talk to me a little bit about, um, your raise that you're doing, um, whether you've raised anything yet, uh, whether this is the first raise or not, um, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So we bootstrapped the company. I seeded the company and I have, uh, probably close to about $600,000 of my own capital in here. Um, we are raising $3 million uh, at a $12 million pre-money. Uh, we started to test revenue over the last year. We did $276,000 in testing revenue, acquired over 500 clients and averaged over $690 per paying user last year, which gives us a very nice uh, you know, um, supplement to our financial forecasting that's based under a conversion model. So it's a simple SaaS product even though we're calling it DAS, data as a service, especially in terms of our future product and the browser, uh, the ability to kind of turn data streams on and off as per uh, in building your own user dashboard in this experience around the industry that I like. So uh, the industry you like. So um, again, technically we're in a seed round still. Um, mm -hmm. We're looking for, um, you know, not only an investor, but a strategic investor that kind of come in and buy in not only into our vision, uh, but, you know, help with, uh, you know, driving our convergence with other networks. Um, we built a low cost product that we think um, enterprises can value, especially in enterprise wide licensing, where we can pick up a thousand to two thousand licensing uh, licenses at a top. And again, we're strong advocates of being able to build these vertical 
um, uh, data dashboards that really speak in, with authenticity to the markets that they represent.